This is a practice of body dialogue, something I created over 40 years ago to help people have more awareness of their breath, to open them to the joy of living their lives fully, and to understand how to work with everyday movements to have greater ease and efficiency and pleasure. So these small practices will enhance your day and bring you into a greater understanding and hopefully nourishment to enhance your life. I like to start my morning practice on the ground. I like being on the ground because I like to feel gravity doing the work of releasing the tension and the holding patterns that sometimes I accumulate during the night. We all get stiff and tight during the night. So this is a nice morning practice, but it's also good after you've been out in the day living your life. So you are on your back. <clears throat> You're on your back and you're feeling your feet planted hip width apart. Your shoulders are resting on the floor and your head is anchoring. And the first thing we do is just close our eyes and tune into our breath. And the noticing of our breath is not to judge how we're doing, but to just notice is there a part of our body that is not receiving the message to let go? So I literally tell my arms, let go, particularly the armpits where we hold a lot of tension. I tell my neck and my jaw and my tongue, let go, and I let my head rock back and forth, feeling the actual surface of the skull on the floor. And I even think of my eyes softening back into the skull so that I'm not tightening in the eye socket. And then as I travel down from my head on, my, on the floor, I think about my spine being like a zipper that I'm unzipping. And as I unzip it, every side of me, the right side, the left side, the bottom side, the top side can release even more. The goal of this practice is to open the gates of tension and release out of those joints, the holding patterns that we use to accommodate to our daily life ritual and our emotional bodies. So I keep my mouth gently closed and I'm breathing through my nose at this point. And with each in breath, I notice how I'm filling with air. And with each ex exhale, I encourage my bones to wait into the floor. And I take the time. To visualize the zippering and unzippering of the spine, the release of the shoulder girdle, the head, the tail. And for the sake of opening into width and bringing my arms up over my head, clasping my hands behind my head, making a pocket for my head to sit in. And as I lift my head and look at my belly button, I'm stretching the top of my spine and opening all the way down as far as I can go. Exhaling as I release the head towards the floor. We're going to do that again. I'm going to bring my head up, look at my belly button, bring my elbows together. As I bring my elbows together and I look at my belly button, I'm tractioning my head so that my spine lengthens. 
I'm releasing any tension in my buttocks and my hips, softening all around my jaw and my tongue, releasing my eye socket. And on the end of that exhalation, I want to be completely and totally melting into the floor. And if you do that a few times, you'll start noticing your breathing changes. And without judging, with just awareness, what else is changing? The places where we hold, we hold tension in our jaw and in our tongue. So I use my fingertips to massage right at that place where my tongue my jaw and my cheeks. I give a little bit of pressure in that joint, inviting it to let go. One of the biggest places we hold anger, fear, and anxiety is right in this structure. The jaw, the tongue, the back of the skull. So by giving yourself a loving, gentle touch, you're encouraging the jaw to release, the tongue to let go. And on the next exhalation, you're just gonna sigh. And with each sigh, you're letting everything drop. Your sigh won't be the same as mine. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're just releasing the exhale and feeling where you have restriction. And now you're gonna take a few minutes to massage where it is that you need to be massaged. For me, it's my neck. Sometimes it's my armpits. We hold tension, believe it or not, in our armpits. So sometimes we just have to use our elbow to stretch our arms and feel the movement in our shoulder girdle, just that simple movement. You can do it on both sides as if you're making circles in the sky with your elbows, you're mobilizing that shoulder girdle. And by doing that, you're opening the top of the ribs which is where your lungs are living and impact your breathing. And then if we bring our fingers to the bottom of our ribs, where the attachment of the diaphragm is in the back, you can start noticing, is there movement in the rib cage when I breathe? So if you put your fingers on the outside of the ribs, Notice if there's movement as you inhale and exhale. And again, try that with a sigh. You'll notice when you're breathing into your hands. Even if you have to actually effort a little bit, tiny little bit to feel that there's movement horizontally, you'll start to notice that the ribs respond to the breath if the diaphragm is engaged when you're breathing. I mean, the diaphragm always is engaged, but sometimes you actually can't feel it because there's so much tension in the torso. So you wanna release from the sternal angle all the way down. And I like to tap because sometimes that helps to create an awareness, a sensory awareness of the holding patterns in the ribs. So, that sometimes is helpful when you're breathing to get a little bit more focus into the diaphragm. So the diaphragm attaches in the back body. It comes into the front, but attaches to the bottom of the ribs. And you can't make the diaphragm work. It's autonomic, meaning that the brain 
is what's controlling your breathing. But what you can alter is how much tension you have in your gut, in your stomach muscles, how much tension you have in the head, neck, jaw, in the shoulders. So everything we're doing right now is to free up the parts of the body that interfere with the fullness of our breath. Because this practice is focusing on breathing. In order to release the gates and the hip sockets, the shoulders, the jaw, even the eyes, we can actually direct our attention and our breath to those areas. So right now, when you pick up your feet off the floor and you bring your thighs close to your chest, aiding it by using the hands behind the thighs, you can actually feel the lower back getting wider onto the floor. And you'll start noticing what's going on in your hip sockets. Are they very tight? Are they restricted right to left, front to back? And just like we use the elbows to direct our shoulder girdle, play around with your thighs and your knees and your lower legs and see if you can use the knees to direct the energy out of the socket so you're not holding and gripping in the muscles that attend right deep, deep, deep in the flexors. The psoas muscle is one of them and it attaches to the diaphragm so it totally impacts how you breathe. So this whole practice is to bring awareness to the parts of the body that interfere with the breath. So we're trying to just encourage and even coax the breath into a greater depth, a greater expansion without efforting, without puffing and pushing, just by releasing and opening in the major joints. So now we're working the hip sockets. And as you're using your hands, can you release the elbows and the shoulder girdle? So you're not tightening in the neck to do this. You're not tightening in the jaw. And some of you might even notice that your neck wants to get involved. So you have to maybe have a pillow under your head or use your fingers to release any tightness where the skull meets the spine. And I'm going to let you spend a little bit of time exploring when you move your legs and you move your arms, can you relax the head, the neck, the jaw? And not to make it complicated, I want you to be starting a easy sigh on the exhale. So you're moving and you're exhaling. You're inviting the main joints, the head, neck, the shoulder, the hip, to let go and give over to gravity. One way to play with this is to let the weight of the legs take you into a spiral stretch. So the thighs touch away from the hips. And for some of you, this will be a big stretch. And for some of you, it will be very easy playing with just rocking the legs from side to side and then doing a little tiny stretch in the spiral. So you feel the movement from the hips to the shoulder girdle. And I like to bring my head into that as well. The advantage of doing the practice with me is that you slow everything down. And when you're on your own, 
We like to speed things up. So that's the big advantage of doing a practice in real time. And if you're feeling impatient, that's fine. That's something to be aware of. I'm really impatient right now. I want this to be over. Or I don't like how I feel. I'm very tight. Or isn't it interesting that it's hard for me to move and exhale at the same time? This is information. So think of this practice as a practice of curiosity. And now I'm on my back and I'm just letting my feet settle, my shoulder girdle settle, rocking my head back and forth and rocking my knees back and forth. And I'm tuning in to my belly. Am I tightening in this area? Can I let it go? I don't want you to push it out. I just want you to imagine that it's a big, open, free lake, <laughs> something very soft. And if you can get into the softness of that pelvis bowl, your lower back will release, the tension in your eyes can let go. And I'm gonna recommend that you use your hands to relax your eyes by creating some heat generating energy and just using your hands to let your eyes go since we spend so much time efforting through our eyes. Your mouth is closed, you're breathing in and out through the nose. And you're letting your body give over to gravity. One more time, you're exhaling, and we're gonna sigh the whole exhale out. And as if you're just waking in the morning, I want you to stretch in any direction that makes you feel good right now. You're just stretching through the extremities, through the palms, through the foot, opening the legs. See if you can feel the joy and the pleasure of stretching. Your body is so happy. And particularly the body stocking, the fascia, loves when you stretch because it hydrates the fascia. So you can even rub your thighs, rub your arms. And if you do it very gently, you're actually encouraging the flow of the lymph. From our back body, we're gonna take one more exhale. Notice if there's anything different from when you began. And then in your own time, taking as long as you need to, we're going to come onto all fours. The reason we're going onto all fours is that the back body now is going to be towards the ceiling rather than on the floor. And you're going to experiment with the same gates, the shoulder girdles, the hip sockets, the tongue, the jaw, and the head. For those of you who can get on all fours, this is a wonderful practice to mobilize the vertebra that you would just on your back, if you were on your back, you can do this practice afterwards or you could do this practice before either way. But what we're doing right now is engaging the breath to release the tightness in the vertebra. So you have an entire string of pearls, which we call the spine. Between each one of those vertebra, we have little jelly pockets called discs, and we wanna keep them nice and moist. And as we age, we get less 
hydrated. So we need to do things to hydrate. And one way to do that is to breathe into that string of pearls. So imagine if you like the image of the zipper or the image of the pearls that from the top of the skull, right behind the ears, all the way to your tail, you have little individual pearls. And what we're doing right now is just mobilizing them using the exhale. Breathing in, you can breathe in your mouth or your nose and on the exhale, your side. You're letting your jaw hang, your tongue hang, your eyes be soft. And if you're having pressure in the wrist and you want to do this on the forearms, you can do the same thing. And if your knees are sensitive, you can put a pillow underneath your knees. And what we're doing right now is really literally just inviting mobility into our spine. And if you're doing this in real time with me, we're doing this in more, it feels like a very long time because we have to be very gentle, very soft, have a lot of compassion the areas that are tight in our body. So if you prefer an E sound to an ah sound, just play with. You can hum. And then if you can, bring your buttocks to your heels. Again, you can put a pillow underneath your buttocks to make it not such an extreme bend. If you can do this, you'll stretch the lower spine and then you can put your forehead on your hands and relax all of the tension in our forehead. Very important place to let go these muscles and the brain, the executive function, just let it go. In this position, if you can, you can even put a bolster between your forehead and your hands, but you want to rest your skull. So you're resting these muscles, these occipital muscles. You want to think of the skull releasing the jaw letting go, the tongue opening from the back of the throat, and the eyes. If you can get comfortable in here, you can even get some stretch in your armpits. And in this position, you'll actually feel the width of the shoulder blades and the width of the rib cage. And remember, wherever there's a rib, there's lung. So you wanna get in as much as possible to the tightness in those, the cartilage between the ribs so that you can actually bring breath into those muscles and then into the lungs as a result. You can spend quite a lot of time here. <laughs> Some mornings, my whole practice is just this. It's just opening the rib cage. I can put on some music and let this guide me into movement for the day. There are days that my knees don't wanna bend, so I have to do it from here. There are days that I wanna stretch my toes. So I do the practice with my toes curled under. 
Sometimes I want to open my ankles, so I do it with my ankles flat. My work is called Body Dialogue. So you're listening. What does your body want today? What is your body asking for from you? If your body's your best friend, can you listen and then respond to the needs that your body has today? In this position, you're letting your head drop and gravity then releases all the tightness in your neck. The string of pearls is hanging. And if you can really let your head go, pushing down into the floor, you can open the back of the ribs, open the back of the shoulders. And one more time, just come back and bring yourself, if you can, into a lengthened spine in this squatted position. Notice if your breathing has changed at all. And on the next exhalation, if you can, and if you want to, you can walk your hands to your knees and start stretching either into a squat or if you prefer, and you are accustomed to doing this, into face down dog. Or maybe you want to do both. So in this position, I'm playing with my legs to lengthen my spine. In this position, I'm opening my lower body. So this is an entire practice that you can do on all fours. And I'm just offering you suggestions, just like I offered suggestions on the back, I'm offering you suggestions in this position. And if you can imagine that with each exhale, you're releasing tension along the spine. And if you can release tension along the spine, you can release all the tension in the river of nerves that come out of the spine. So most of us are carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. And a place where we often have a lot of tightness is between the end of the neck and right at the bottom of our shoulder blades. It's the thoracic spine and the muscles between those ribs, the intercostal muscles get very tight from sitting at the computer driving cars. So after you've done this stretch forward and back, you can start playing around with side by threading the arm through the arm, the opening arm. You can start to play with using this hand to stretch the shoulder blade. And if you can work with your own weight, you'll begin to feel, oh, I really need it down below. Or maybe you're the person who needs it up on top, but I can't find it for you. You have to see if you can play with this like it's an exploration game. And rather than feeling this is a chore, can you actually get into the play of it? So there's not a right way to do this. There's the right way for your body. You're the expert of your body. And if you can find where that stretch is, you can exhale right into the place in your body. So we're not doing this for strengthening, we're doing it for release. There are times we wanna strengthen these muscles, but the purpose of this practice today is finding the exhalation in the muscle. Sometimes I have to use my head and my tail to find the place in the center that needs a stretch. In my case, I have a scoliosis, so I have one side that likes to stretch more than the other. So this is a critical stretch for me. So 
Find your exhale. So you're actually almost trying to be like a lizard in this exercise. For those of you that live around those Komodo lizards, imagine that you're one of those little things that scamper and stretch through the arm to find the blade, stretch through the shoulder girdle and get to know how the arm works. It might even be interesting to look at the anatomy to get a better idea of how your shoulder blades and your arms work. So if you just play with your elbows, <laughs> you can actually start feeling how much mobility there is between the shoulder blades, the elbows, the wrists, and the palms, and you'll actually feel energy moving in the palms. So be just gentle with your neck, because all of us have different neck stories. And the signature of my practice is that you really are the person that knows how to do this for yourself. There's no teacher that can tell you how to do it right for you. Only you know. And a good way to end this practice is to just see how much movement can you find after you've done the stretch. How much awareness do you have in that shoulder girdle? And from there, getting up, you have lots of choices. You can get up by going into a squat and still playing with your shoulder blades, stretching the arms in front of you as you bring your buttocks back. Or if you prefer, and you're the person who likes to go into face down dog, you can stretch through the legs and then find the shoulder blades. You might be the person that wants to go from the floor using a chair to stand up. And I'm gonna to suggest to you that you take time to get from all fours to standing, that you use this as an opportunity, again, to explore the relationship of the legs to the back. And for some of you who have tight hamstrings, this will be torturous. So you don't wanna spend that much time here. For other people, it's just delicious. And you're all different. You're all different but we all need to exhale. So you're just gonna find the breath and give yourself the exhalation through the whole body. And if you can luxuriate in going from standing, from sitting to standing, and then if you want, you can go back from standing back to all fours and just play with that. So I'm offering you a lot of choices in this menu. You find what works for you. This sequence is in a chair. And the reason I'm doing this sequence in a chair is that we spend time sitting in a chair. We spend time sitting at a computer, we spend time eating meals. And the principles that we're gonna work with right now are the same principles that I like to work with in all of body dialogue, which is how do we use the breath to inform our movement? And how do we use our joints to release accumulated tension? So we have tension in our armpits and our shoulder girdle. We have tension in our tongue and our jaw and the back of our neck, which often translates even into our eyes. We stare and we hold on to our eyes with tension when we're looking at the computer or even driving a car, exhausting. So we have the whole face, then we have the jaw and the neck, we have the armpits, the shoulder girdles, and then we have the hip sockets. And why do I care about those joints? Because I want to release the tightness that prevents us from getting good breath. 
All of this is so that we can get out of our own way to allow our breathing mechanism, which is our diaphragm and our accessory breathing muscles to do their job. That's what this is about. So as our bodies change, as we age, as we deal with more um, crises in the world or maybe even family crises, those tensions accumulate in the systems of our body. And for some people, it's enough to just sit and meditate. And for other people, it needs to be moving. And for some people, it has to be really vigorous moving. And for some of us, it can be very soft, gentle micro movements. So this practice is micro moving. It's not intended to give you a workout. It's not intended to get you to sweat. It's not intended to be a practice of strengthening. It's intended to help you get a deeper, more satisfying breath. And there seems to be nothing more important to me right now than helping the natural system, the organic system that my body knows, which is breathing, to be more efficient and to be more easeful and to be more playful. Uh, a recent publication by a book by James Nestor cites my teacher, Carl Stow, and this work is a combination of all my teachings of working with breathing coordination and yoga and qigong and simple dance practices. So I want to invite you in this chair section to have a pillow either underneath you or even behind you or both. I like to have a pillow behind me because it allows my back body to rest. Some of you need to have a pillow underneath, but you want to make sure that your legs are comfortably on the floor. You don't want your feet up here. You really want to feel the heels on the floor. That's very important. So in this practice, we draw on the teachings of the Alexander technique, which is that the neck is free to allow the head to release forward and up at the top of the spine. F.M. Alexander was teaching in the 1800s and he understood that the head, which is very heavy, tends to pull the spine down. So we want the spine to lengthen and we want the breath to start all the way down, 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 down in our pelvic floor. And we want to bring it into the fullness of our being. So this practice is really drawing on my understanding of Eastern traditions, particularly Qigong and Western traditions, as I said, the FM Alexander technique and the style breathing coordination. If you are a person who has a hard time sitting up, you might need more than one pillow. You might need a pillow on your lower back as well. So before you set up, find the props you need. And we're gonna bring the session to a beginning by just focusing on the breath, just like we start all my tech, my practices, I like to go into the back body and feel the release of the tension and the holding of the back body, the back of the neck, the back of the jaw, the back of the tongue. And just notice the body opening, widening, and allow yourself, if you can, to take out the judgment and just be in pure awareness. We're not judging ourselves. We're having compassion for this body that works so hard to take us through the day. So you can even start by just giving yourself a little thank you for showing up, taking some time today to attend to your breath and attend to the ways in which we need to expand. This is a fitness exercise. It doesn't look like going to the gym, but the fitness is for the breath itself. So with one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart, you're just going to notice the in-breath and the out-breath. The inhale, where the diaphragm moves out and down, and the exhale as the diaphragm moves up into the ribs. So you can even do this gesture, breathing in, the diaphragm moves out, breathing out, the diaphragm moves up. 
visualize this big widening into the lower ribs on the inhale. And on the exhale, the ribs come together to allow the diaphragm to move up, filling the lungs with fresh air. We slow it all down, bringing awareness to our spine, soles of our feet, how we're sitting on the chair. And if you can imagine that your head is a soap bubble, it floats, just floats, not weighting you down, but inviting the length in the spine. And on the next exhalation, I want you to just close your eyes and you're gonna hiss on the exhalation. So notice if as you breathe in, you want to collapse or tighten up and see if you can inhibit that desire and just allow the soap bubble or the balloon to just gently lift on the inhale and gently lift on the exhale. So that soap bubble or the balloon is not bobbing up and down. Subtle movement. And as you do this, notice where are you holding tension this morning? For me, it's always the jaw. So I go right to the jaw, put my fingers, my, I, I like to put my index finger behind the ear and encourage my jaw to, jaw to release. And my middle finger is on those masseter muscles. So I'm just inviting the jaw to let go. If I can do that, my tongue will get nice and juicy and flabby. And on my exhalation, I'm just gonna try the vowel sound, I. You can make it more audible. And everybody has a different exhale length, so don't go by mine. This has been my practice for decades. It's going to be different than yours. Can you do this and let the jaw go? The tongue be heavy and the cheeks be nice and juicy. Last time. Yeah. Releasing the jaw, my hand goes back to the heart and the belly. Tuning into my breath. I notice maybe that my shoulders want some attention. So I'm gonna bring my arms up over my head Clasp my right hand to my left elbow, my left hand to my right elbow. I'm going to bring my arms as far back as I can. Some days they're at my ears, some days behind my ears, some days all the way behind me. But the idea is to bring your arms up, but not push your ribs forward. So can you relax your ribs into the back of the chair? And now in opposition from your ribs, stretch your arms back. It takes some work. Gently coax your elbows behind you. Notice whether your shoulders want to come up to your ears. If you want to bring them up, that's fine. Roll them back and now encourage the ribs to drop. As you're encouraging the ribs to drop, just continue to bring the arms back. And turn your head from side to side. So you're not holding in the head and neck. You're not holding in the jaw and the tongue. And now stretch your arms up so that the fingertips are going towards the ceiling. And see if you can feel the opposition of the fingers stretching up, but the sit bones going down. And notice if one side of the ribs wants to stretch more than the other. 
See if you can go from side to side, stretching the right side, stretching the left side. See what side likes to stretch more. And now you can go all the way over into a side bend. You'll be a little bit of a banana. You're gonna come center. Can you do this and soften the eyes and the neck and the jaw and the tongue? And just side bend as if you were a rooted tree and you're just bending the side body and open your arms and feel how much stretch can you get in those arms? How much stretch in the armpits and bring your arms down and notice that simple little stretch opened your shoulder girdle a little bit wider so that the distance from your notch where your clavicle sits on your sternum gets wider, 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 wider till the end of your shoulders. If you do this simple practice and bring your elbows together and bring your elbows out and imagine you're climbing up a wall, you'll get beautiful movement in your shoulder blades and you'll help your upper body miraculously from getting tight when you're doing all that stuff, whether it's chopping vegetables, cooking dinner, sitting at a computer, driving a car, think of all the ways that those muscles get tight in a day. And now just let the breath go into the back body. So you can breathe in the nose and out the mouth, or you can breathe in the nose and keep your mouth gently closed. Play around with how do you like to do that? It's not at all important how you do it. And now we're gonna give some attention to our legs. So I want you to stretch your legs out and just flex your feet a little bit. You can feel the back of the hamstrings and bring your feet as far back underneath you as possible. And then find where are you comfortable with your feet on the floor. And then notice, do you like to be very wide or do you like to be narrow? And believe it or not, it's good in the course of a day to change from being wide to narrow. Even bringing one leg up and stretching in the hip socket is a great way of getting a stretch in the hips. So we're gonna just start with a little bit of hip flexion. And as we go into a slight forward bend, feel your sit bones going down, your head going up and come back. We're gonna do it a few more times. You're breathing in. On the exhalation, you're going to send your head forward and you're going into a gentle forward bend. Notice that stretch deep, deep, deep. The piriformis stretch gets way deep in the hip sockets. And then if you want, you can just bring the opposite arm and get a little bit of a spiral. Can you find your exhale? And on the next exhalation, coming back, see what it feels like to just be sitting here. As your spine lengthens, your neck is free, your head's releasing off the top of the spine, you bring your foot down and you take the other one up. And I like to flex that foot, maybe circle the ankle joints. As we age, the ankles get very tight. So you wanna keep them nice and fluid. And you can bring the foot all the way up or you can bring it down, you can bring it higher up with a pillow, whatever feels comfortable for you. Again, you're being curious about your body. This is your own field work. And you're gonna go into a simple forward bend, increasing the stretch and on the exhalation, just let out a
And as you come back to the back of the chair, see if you can find that spiral by taking the opposite arm to the opposite leg. And you're gonna <clears throat> keep yourself as much as you can reaching up towards the ceiling. So you're not letting your head go forward, you're going all the way up. If you want to increase the stretch, you can go into a forward bend. For some people, it's really hard to do this. So you're not going to do it to the point of, I hate this. Okay? That's not the goal. And then come back down and notice if you're sitting differently. Has your breath changed at all? Can you lengthen your spine a little bit more? And then just look around the room. Let your eyes lead your head. And take in the whole room and see what you see. Maybe there's something that's always been there that you're seeing for the first time today. Keeping yourself awake and alive and curious. And you're just letting your whole body respond to your eyes exploring. And I'm going to add a smile to this and see what changes when you smile and you say yes to the world and yes to the day, if that doesn't help your mood a little bit. Since what we're doing today in this chair is creating a practice of awareness and openness of breath and hopefully better balance. So I want you to just imagine that you're taking a little stroll in your chair by rocking from one sit bone to the next. And you're just doing a little spiral movement. You can do it from the sit bones or you can do it from the upper body, but you're just letting your body spiral around. It's a very gentle action. And let's see if we can add some sound. When you come center, you're just allowing yourself to release into the chair. Breathing a full breath from the pelvic floor, allowing your head to float like a helium balloon. And one more time, bringing your arms up, looking up at the ceiling, looking up at our fingertips, stretching the front of our spine. And see what it feels like to reach behind yourselves, stretching the front of your body. And now go even higher to come up to center. And as you bring your arms out, feel your palms stretching away from the center. Bring your energy in. The energy will come all the way to the front of your body and feel the energy of your palms coming together. One more time, stretching up, looking up, and this time flexing your hands, opening out from the periphery, away, way, 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 way out. And now bringing the energy of palms together and feel this little ball of energy. We're doing a little tiny Qigong practice of setting the ball up and down. This can be done standing. This can be done sitting. You can make it go slower. You can make it faster. Bring the palm together as if you've got a treasured ball between your palms and now bring it right into your belly and feed that energy into your belly and notice your breath. Have you been holding your breath or have you been letting yourself exhale with each movement? So breathing in, bring your arms up over your head. Breathing out, let the fingertips come in front of you. The 
bringing energy to your belly. Notice if it's different than when we started. Bring your feet as close to your buttocks as possible because you're gonna put your hands on your thighs and you're gonna go into a slight bend from the hip sockets with your head away from your tail, pushing into your feet. You're gonna stand on your legs, push down with your feet, stand up. We're gonna do this one more time. You're gonna bend your knees. Imagine that the soap bubble is continuing to go up. Now you're gonna bend right at the top of the thighs. You're in what Alexander Technique calls a monkey position. Now you're just lowering yourself with your knees and you come back to center. The head is lengthening away from the tail. You're gonna bring your arms up over your head, stretch your fingertips towards the ceiling, go into a forward bend and stand up. And you're gonna bring your hands down into Anjali Mudra, bring your feet together. And in this wonderful melange of different kinds of traditions and techniques, we come back to center. This practice can be done to start your day, to end your day, to take a break in the middle of the day. But whenever you do it, it will help to restore balance and breath. Thank you for giving yourself this gift today. <laughs>